Welcome to Think Tech Wednesday on the Think Tech Radio series on AM 760 KGU, broadcasting across the islands and raising public awareness in Hawaii. Now here's your host, Jay Fidel. Welcome back to Think Tech here on Energy Wednesday, Hawaii, the state of clean energy. With us today is Anthony Q. Ku, did I get that right? Ku, yes. Uh, professor of Electrical Engineering from UH Manoa in the College of Engineering. He's the Director of the Energy and Sustainability Program at UH Manoa in the College of Engineering. Say hi to the folks, Anthony. Hi, I'm delighted to be here. Thanks, Jay, for inviting me today. I hope I can talk a little bit about some of the programs we have. We want to do that. So we're calling this show Developing a New Energy Workforce at UH Manoa. And that is specifically a given project called REIS, Renewable Energy Island Sustainability. Okay, and uh, we're going to spend a little time with Anthony Koo talking about that. But before we do, we want to have our regular opening feature, which is our weekly megawatt moment with Sean Wirt of Hawaii Energy. Sean, thank you for joining us today. Hi there, Jay. Thanks for having us, or me. Oh, always, absolutely. We always have fun. So tell us what you're giving away this week. I want to know about the giveaways in Hawaii Energy. Sure. We can give away a couple conserve switches. So any callers that call into today's show, the conserve switch allows you to plug it into a socket, and that way there's a little switch. You don't have to unplug the particular equipment you plug it into. You know, a lot of people say, hey, I really want to unplug all the devices when I leave home, but it kind of... I don't know, wrecks your outlet a little bit, that little outlet plate. And um, it's a little bit of a hassle. So we're happy to give away some conserve switches. What you do is plug that conserve switch into the outlet, as I mentioned, and um, that outlet plugs into your equipment. So no more pulling out that cord. Turn it off with a switch. I have one. You gave, you it, you gave it to me, and I actually didn't know what it did. So I ah. looked and studied and studied and looked at it, and I used all my brain cells and tried to figure out what it was doing, and it, it looked like an outlet with a switch. That's what it looked like. Exactly. And Anthony so. Koo is here. He's an electrical engineer. I should show him the thing. <laughs> <laughs> How many engineers does it take, right? <laughs> or lawyers, in this case. So, you know, I, mean, I guess you're pointing out the problem that lots of the sophisticated um, electronic devices in our houses stay on all the time. And by doing, by staying on all the time, they use a fair amount of electricity, and that makes our bills go just that much higher, and there's no real need for it. So my question to you, Sean, are you ready for my question, Sean? I am. If this is a problem, then why don't the manufacturers cut out this 24 by 7 kind of drainage? Uh, why don't they have it go off when you tell it to go off? What's the problem? <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't have the answer to that, but maybe we can serve, uh, uh, solve world peace instead. No, uh, we don't have the answers for that because obviously the manufacturers control, but hopefully demand for products that incorporate that type of technology, um, demand from the public will spur on these manufacturers to go ahead and Again, well, incorporate those this technologies. reminds me about your, your issue with um, the fans, is it, or the lights in the garages, and how, yes, and how they were originally place. engineered to stay on all the time to draw the carbon monoxide out, right? And uh, right. this was over-engineered years ago. You know the term over-engineering, Anthony, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so um, you know, now when we care a lot about the cost of electricity, uh, we want to cut that back. So you guys found a black box that will do that, um, you know, in a smart way so that they, these fans are not going when they don't need to go, which is really, really clever. Um, but at the same time, Anthony, maybe I could ask you, why do these devices we have in our houses run 24 by 7 even after you turn it off? I think it's just, they just haven't been programmed. Um, as you mentioned, maybe as consumers become more aware of these things. Maybe some of the manufacturers haven't thought about these issues. There are a lot of issues that people don't think about, but the, there's enough um, consumer demand. Maybe some of these things might change a little bit. Yeah. And so, especially with you know the coming of the smart grid and so forth, there will be more of these uh, demand response where you can automatically shut off different appliances and so forth too. Yeah, yeah. I think Oceanet is working on a project uh, along those lines where um, you can 
turn off switches um, by remote control. You can get sort of a smart house thing where you can turn these. It's the very same thing you've got, Shen. Um, you turn it off sort of at the root of it, and you turn it off completely, and you turn it, you do it remotely. I mean, yours, your your device, the one you're handing out, is is manual in the sense you've got to go to the plug and you've got to get your hand around it and, and turn that little switch off, which is very creative and very clever. Um, but I think there's guys working on it where you, you can do that for your whole house in one switch by remote control, by you know, some sort of radio device. So more is coming, right? You're going to be giving those away soon, too? Yes, that's correct. What else you got today, Sean? Well, I wanted to just mention three easy ways for everyone to save electricity. So obviously there are pieces of equipment now, uh, simple and more complex, ranging from surf switches all the way to commercial or residential garage needs. But just keeping it simple, um, three ways to save electricity starting today, like this minute. Um, one would be to have a timer and also adjust your timer on your water heating at home. So just making sure that the timer is properly set, that will save a ton of energy. And uh, right now we're running, as we had mentioned a few weeks ago, a limited time $1,000 rebate for the installation of solar water heating. Mm -hmm. So again, that's limited time. We encourage everyone to really explore that as an option. And then two is to, I know we're heading into the summer. Well, we're ahead, we're in spring now. We're about to head into the summer. Mm -hmm. The weather's going to warm up a bit. We encourage everyone to really reduce your use of AC. Try to use the trade winds if you can, and especially if you have overhead ceiling fans. That really makes it much more comfortable for all of us. Mm -hmm. Eliminates the need to turn on the AC. Mm -hmm. And then third, talking about reducing your use, turn off the lights. I know it sounds so simple. We've been hammering it for years. Pull the plug or turn off the lights. Turn off things you don't need to use. And then there's another product um, we may have mentioned before, which is called an advanced power strip. So that's the slightly, well, for lay people, advanced power strip is beyond a power strip. It has a certain socket that won't basically won't uh, eliminate your any, any special timer uh, and other technologies. So what you do is it, it's most common for TV setups. Mm -hmm. I know a lot of people out there have a fancy TV system now. So your cable box, for example, should stay on so you don't eliminate or um, destroy the settings there mm -hmm. and so forth. So we're encouraging people to look for these products, which are starting to come to a lot of local retailers. Advanced power strips are the way to go. Yeah, so if I want to get a list of the things that you recommend or that you give away, how do I get that list? You can actually call us or visit us online. So it's whiteenergy.com is our website. We have a ton of information, including our next outreach community event. A lot of times we bring these um, giveaways to our events because we want to encourage people to come to our booth. We don't bike, and we actually don't sell anything, as you know. We're here to serve all the rate payers of Hawaii, Honolulu, and Maui counties. So if you go on our website, whiteenergy.com, if you don't have internet access, call us at 537 Five five seven seven. That's our customer service line. They'll they'll be able to help you out there and tell you where we will be next in your community. We want to talk to you and hopefully be able to give you some some of these products or give you leads as to where you may be able to purchase them. I love when government agencies give out their telephone number. You know, and a lot <laughs> of them don't do that. <laughs> so how about one more time? What's the number? Sir, the number is five three seven five five seven seven. Okay, you guys, this is a valuable number because, you know, the one thing about Hawaii Energy is it's completely kind-hearted. <laughs> it's completely into the greater good. And uh, those guys are trying to help us help ourselves. And so whatever they say, you got to take it seriously for that reason, and it'll, it'll be helpful to all of us. And so thank you, Sean Word, and, and also uh, thank you to Ray Starling um, and Larry Newman. And all you guys at Hawaii Energy, thanks for coming on the show. We'll see you next week, right? Yes, definitely. Thank you, Shan. Thank you. Aloha. Okay, so now we have uh, Anthony Koo, Professor of Electrical Engineering at UH Manoa. And he's the Director of the Energy and Sustainability Program, which is REIS. That's Renewable Energy and Island Sustainability. And we're talking today about developing a new energy workforce at UH Manoa. This is really important. 
Uh, we're going to take a short break, then we're going to get into it. Right, Anthony? Sounds good. All right. We'll be right back. Stay there. Seven sixty KGU, part of the Wall Street Business Network. We're starting the afternoon commute with a stall on the H one in town. It's ever bound at the Luna Lilo exit. If you're coming in from the east, you're going to see slow traffic when you get to UH. No problems going east or going over the uh, mountains to the windward side. The drive west is typical. The H one slows at the Hickam curve. The Moana Lewis slows at Kaiser Hospital, and inbound traffic from the west slows right as you get to the Middle Street merge. Okay, now it's going into national ads. So anyway, we'll talk first about uh, your grants okay. and what they're for. Okay. Then we'll talk about the research you're doing and the projects you're doing. So this is the meat and potatoes part of our discussion. Sounds good. Sort of the boundaries of, of your effort and, and the subject of the show. Should I give a little motivation on why we got started? Or yeah, yeah. We'll get into that. How'd you get into it? Right. Okay. But, but that, that would be after you define what it is. Okay. <clears throat> In fact, uh, yeah, I will ask you about that. You know, the one thing that I think is critical, not only here but elsewhere, is for somebody to have an institutional memory about how things got started. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, we forget and we right. lose our way. And, you know, what is, it, what is he who he who doesn't respect his he who forgets history is doomed to repeat it. Right. <laughs> <laughs> it's so true. And we do it so much. <laughs> Think Tech Hawaii is a Hawaii nonprofit corporation organized in the year 2000. Its purpose is to raise public awareness about the importance of technology, history. energy, right. agriculture, and globalism to the diversification and expansion of our economy. We do this by television shows on community television and on OC16, by newspaper articles, and by our Think Tech radio series on KGU 760 AM. We also do it by panel programs and events, including our monthly luncheon programs with the Hawaii Venture Capital Association. Think Tech, working to raise public awareness in Hawaii. Check us out at thinktechhawaii.com. Think Tech Energy Wednesday is also brought to you by Hawaii Energy. Hawaii Energy is a ratepayer funded conservation and efficiency program administered by SAIC under contract with the Hawaii Public Utilities Commission, serving the islands of Hawaii, Lanai, Maui, Molokai, and Oahu. Honey, if we had installed solar water heating last year, we would have saved about $600 on our electric bill. Wow, that's like 40 pounds of poke. Or 15 bikinis. Or 800 pounds of rice. Or 200 pairs of slippers. Or 750 malasadas. Well, that's a lot of malasada. Uh. Solar water is the first step towards big energy savings. With Hawaii Energy's limited time rebate, get solar water heating for about two grand and reduce your electric bill up to 40%. That's a lot of malasada. Visit hawaiienergy.com slash solar water. Now back to Think Tech Wednesday on AM 760 KGU. Here once again is your host, Jay Fidel. This is Think Tech. We're back. We're live. Thank you, Jack Waters. Thank you, Leah Rodriguez, for helping us out on this show. And I also want to mention that uh, Hawaii Energy is one of three sponsors of this show. There are two others. Uh, one of them is Hawaiian Electric, uh, which is a great company, in my opinion. It cares for, cares about creating clean energy in Hawaii. It is the clean energy leader uh, for the initiative. Also, DBED uh, with the Energy Office, which is the government agency responsible to supervise the development of clean energy in Hawaii, uh, with Richard Lim um, and um, others. So <clears throat> what we've got here today is a discussion about clean energy and about how the university is stepping up to the plate. Uh, and you have money. Anthony, and you are spending the money in order to raise public awareness about energy and thus, you know, make people more committed to clean energy and more knowledgeable about how you bring it online. Uh, so tell us about the money you have and how you're spending it. Okay, maybe I should uh, start how we got formed a little bit. Um, we started out actually in 2009. Um, there's actually quite a few groups uh, on the UH uh, campus interested in energy and sustainability. 
but we found that uh, there was not in engineering uh, a strong effort in this area. There are separate research pockets doing different aspects of energy. And so we decided to get together and see if we could form a multidisciplinary energy group. So initially, it was mainly engineering faculty. But then as I talked to more and more people around campus, we thought energy is just not about engineering and science. There's also other aspects, economics, policy, uh, environment, and other aspects. So we decided to make it more inclusive and have many faculty from uh, all over campus participate in this group. So the first thing we did was we competed in a sustainability competition run by our vi vice chancellor. And we were uh, fortunate to receive $1 million seed grant to start um, an energy and um, research and education group uh, devoted to tackling some of the problems in this area. So with that money, uh, we got together and we started supporting graduate students, educating graduate students, doing research, getting undergraduate students involved in projects, and we applied for some more grants. So the big thing we got was um, in 2010, uh, we competed for this Department of Energy uh, Strategic Training and Education in Power Systems, and we were uh, one of 11 institutions that got this $2.5 million grant. So this is some of the ARA money, and the purpose of this ARA money was to train the next generation of uh, people in engineering, science, social science, in energy and power systems to do different things, work on the smart grid, integrate more renewable energy sources. So we were one of the 11 institutions that got this $2.5 million award. And so for the last three years, we've been working uh, developing research. We have different research projects, which I'll talk about developing engineering um, and social science curriculum in this area, and getting students involved in um, all different aspects of energy. Another thing we're trying to do is also reach out to the community from kids like in middle schools to get them interested in energy, all the way to engineers out in the community to have short courses in this area too so that they can get the latest on some of the technologies too. So. No. <clears throat> Sounds like it changed your life a little because your training was in what? Electrical engineering specifically and what? Communications? Yes. It, it has really changed my life quite a bit because my research area actually wasn't really in the energy area, the power and energy area, but uh, it was more in an area called signal processing and machine learning. Mm -hmm. So I'm. What is that, just so we know? Signal processing is essentially processing of signals. So they can be voice signals, they can be audio signals, they can be video signals. So as you've seen every day, you know, we work with signals in all aspects and how to transform these signals into digital bits and transmit them more efficiently so we can put more bandwidth on uh, wireless uh, channels and so forth. So there's a lot of aspects uh, of signal processing in our everyday life that you know most people don't realize. So I've been working in that area actually for over 25 years. I've also been doing work in an area called machine learning, trying to understand uh, a little bit about how the brain operates and applying these things called neural networks to develop computational algorithms that can help us. So. You know, when I when I read your uh, your bio, and anybody who wants to read Anthony Ku's bio, go on the university website. You can see it all. Uh, with lots of initials <laughs> and acronyms and everything. Okay. It struck me that you are, I mean, aside from being really well prepared to deal with this issue of uh, energy and uh, smart grids, you are also well prepared to deal with traffic. You could make algorithms out of sensors. You know the sensors and you know the algorithm, machine learning. I mean, traffic signals should learn, right? They right. Should, otherwise, they're static, they're, they're locked in amber, they're no good. But if you make them learn, then they, it's organic and they can breathe with the traffic itself. Why don't you do that for this? The city and county is waiting for you, Anthony. Well, there are actually faculty in the College of Engineering that are working on that. Panos Preveduros. Panos example. is doing some work on that area. But 
Uh, machine learning and this whole area of big data is becoming quite popular because how do you handle data, whether it's energy data or it's health data or it's just social networking data? How do you process that data to make intelligence out of that? So that has become a, a big area. But getting back to uh, energy, um, I started getting interested in maybe around 2005, 2006, and then I had some discussions with our dean, uh, Peter Crouch, mm -hmm. and he wanted to, uh, we used to have a power and energy group in, um, in, uh, in, in the College of Engineering and Electrical Engineering, but they retired and we never replaced them. But, you know, in the last few years, energy has become a much more important topic, especially in Hawaii, and so Peter and I talked quite a bit about this uh, developing a program in this area. So initially we talked about, okay, let's uh, look in electrical engineering, get some more faculty in this area. And this is just not unique to Hawaii, but it's also true on the U.S. mainland too. A lot of power and energy programs um, didn't get supported. So there are only a few schools that have really big power and energy programs in electrical engineering. But in recent years, people have been trying to develop that. So we try to go one step beyond that and say, look, energy is just not electrical engineering or engineering problem. It's really a multidisciplinary problem. And so this is one of the reasons why we created this uh, research Yeah, group. yeah. You, now, you're the principal investigator of the whole project, right? Right. But the whole project includes more than the College of, Eng College of Engineering, right? Yes. Uh, we have actually about 20 or so faculty. Um, some are more active than others, but we have people from social science, uh, from College of Tropical Agriculture. Really? Yes. How does the Tropical Agriculture Department get involved in that? Well, there are people that are working on biofuels. So. Ah, okay, okay. So, and we have people from computer science. Um, Philip Johnson Philip is Philip Johnson, he's involved with our yeah, project. He's Very, my hero, yeah. Yeah, he's done so much in terms of his energy dorm competitions. I'll talk a little bit more about that, too, mm -hmm, later. Mm -hmm. so. So this is, this is uh, now this, of course, this is part of an outreach thing. That's, you know, um, uh, Tom Apple talks about that. He talks about having the university reach out of Manoa and having an effect on the community. And what you're talking about is a project that, that really does outreach, right? Well, I think that's our, one of our main missions, and it's even stated in uh, some of our mission statements, is uh, outreach to the community. So to the Hawaiian community and also not only Hawaii but also the U.S. mainland and internationally too. Uh, one of the things that we wanted to do when we created this, uh, this group, this Renewable Energy and Unsustainability Group, is to create a unique uh, center where uh, we could, because a lot of centers have excellent research and so forth, but they don't do the outreach and so forth. But we wanted to do the outreach not only to the local community, so to get to the kids. That's one of our important missions, to get to kids in middle school, to get them interested. I mean, all in the kids. All the I kids, mean, right. All the students in school, from right, middle right. school on to so high what school. So we, what we, we've done is um, we've gone to, for example, uh, we participate in some of the HECO fairs. We've gone to some of the middle schools, too, in terms of um, we go there, and then we have demonstrations like building a wind turbine or a solar car and so forth. Getting kids interested and say, hey, this is a neat area. Let's, uh, you know, maybe I should consider moving into, uh, instead of going into another area, maybe going into the energy area. And then also at the other spectrum, engineers already uh, working maybe for HECO or Pearl Harbor. Um, you know, we have introduced these short courses too. We had a course in wind energy in 2011. This is like an outreach course. This is not a course for credit. Um, it's through the Outreach College. It's a non-credit course. Mm -hmm. So we had a course in 2011 and then we had uh, two multi-day courses last year, one in smart grids and then a, a, another class in solar thermal energy. So. Is, this, is this for, for teachers or for the regular public? or is for, If I want to learn about mm, how to do solar energy in my house, would I be well advised to go to one of your courses? Well, I think it's a fairly high level course. It, it provides you some background on you know, how the industry has developed and so forth and some of the different issues associated with, for example, smart grids and so forth, the communications, uh, some of the control aspects. You know, we, we mentioned a little bit before, we talked about 
oh, turning off lights and so forth. Well, there's this thing called demand-side management where there's different things that can automatically control different appliances, control your thermostat, and, uh, and other things too. And then uh, other aspects in terms of price controls too, that you can get people to voluntarily do different things because it costs more to maybe use energy at different times of the day. So maybe you want to charge your car maybe in the in the, in the morning hours, in the wee morning hours, or you know use your washer and dryer at that time too. So, well, I'm I'm getting the <clears throat> I'm getting the feeling that this is consistent with uh, Chancellor Tom Apple's view of reaching out into the community. But uh, what I'd like to talk to you about right after the break is exactly what you do when you wake up. I know you're on sabbatical now, but what exactly what you do when you wake up in the morning and try to move this uh, agenda ahead. Uh, what research you're doing, what collaborations uh, specifically on a day-to-day -day basis. We'll be right back. We're talking with Anthony Koo, Professor of Electrical Engineering at UH College of Engineering. We'll be right back. 760 KGU. Part of the Wall Street Business Network. No accidents or stalls are reported on any of our major roads right now. Traffic looks very typical for the afternoon commute. Going west, the Moana Lua slows at Moana Lua Gardens. The H1 slows as you get so to the we'll west end of the airport via The heavy traffic okay. continues to the Waimalu um, Pearl City how you exit. Move them ahead. Going east, okay. we're looking good out to Hawaii Kai. No problems to the windward side. And inbound traffic from the east slows at UH. Okay, so we'll talk about the, uh, what you're doing in wind and smart grid and solar, specifically, you know, as engineers. Okay. I'll and, talk about uh, that. And then what the different projects are. I'll yeah. focus in on the uh, UH campus project. Yeah, I want to know about that. Yeah, that's really interesting because it's a laboratory that can be easily mm -hmm. transplanted somewhere else. Right. You know, it's a microgrid. Yeah. And then you can, <clears throat> like you say, there are other groups in the military also doing similar things, but it's not an educational laboratory as opposed to what we're doing. Right. So That's, I want to distinguish between the PR and education side right, with right. The, uh, you know, the, real, the real science part, you know, moving it ahead. <clears throat> and, and I suppose we should also talk about w what this does for entrepreneurs. I mean, so if I, um, I don't know, if I study algae, then I might go out and make an algae company. Right. Uh, if I study smart grid, I might go out and make a smart grid company. Who knows? And and uh, although OTED is not functional right now, <laughs> well, they have HRDV the the that has some funding. With the Kahiawa Wind Farm on Maui and the Kahuku and Kawailoa Wind Farms on Oahu, First Wind is pleased to create clean, local sources of energy powered by Hawaii Straight Winds. Understanding our unique environment and host culture, First Wind develops projects that support local communities and provide net benefits to native wildlife. Embracing the concept of caring from Mauka to Makai. Who come a cunning? May the wind blow towards a sustainable future for Hawaii's people. For more information, visit firstwind.com. Now back to Think Tech Wednesday on AM 760 KGU. Here once again is your host, Jay Fidel. Yeah, we're back. We're live. We're happy to be with you here on a Wednesday afternoon in the middle of the week, you know, in, in the month in which spring will happen, if you care about that. <laughs> <laughs> and we have Anthony Koo, Professor of Ele Electrical Engineering at UH Manoa College of Engineering, who is the director, the passionate director, the committed director of the Energy and Sustainability Program, which has changed his life. <laughs> so tell us, uh, you know, we, so there is outreach. We learned that. Um, now the question is, what exactly is the, uh, is the program doing, your program doing, uh, to move the science ahead and to advance, you know, uh, the, the level of knowledge of people in this state and elsewhere about how you do these things, you know, pushing the envelope scientifically. What have you got going? Okay, well, our program is really currently focused on graduate education, but there's also undergraduates uh, uh, taking classes in this area. So there's really two aspects to the graduate education. One is taking fundamental classes so that they can get the basic background knowledge, whether it's in 
uh, engineering, uh, understanding a little bit about uh, wind turbines or PV or devices or understanding some system issues like how power systems work. Or it's more on the social science side or a policy side, understanding uh, some of the economics associated with energy. So they're, they're the classes. And a lot of schools have classes, but one of the things that uh, we like and we say that distinguishes us from maybe other programs is we have these uh, bigger projects. These bigger projects give students like hands-on experience in terms of doing different activities and we can use our UH campus as sort of like a experimental test bed where we can uh, do different things with the students. Um, there are several projects that have been going on. Mm -hmm. uh, some of you may be aware with about Philip Johnson, uh, his Kakui Cup. He's ran that first time in the fall 2011 for three weeks uh, with some of the dorms on uh, UH campus and then he ran a more extended uh, Kukui Cup. This, the, this, this is an year. energy program, right? Yes. So this is energy awareness. So the the first year in um, 2011, it was a three week competition at fr freshman energy dorm. So they gave him some meters, and they had a competition, basically to see which uh, dorm floor could reduce their energy the most. And there's all sorts of other things in terms of education, educating the students in terms of uh, how to save energy understanding what the Kauai Clean Energy Initiative was and so forth, so they could go on the web and get points. And so the whole thing was, it's like a game, getting points for doing different activities and so forth, reducing energy, uh, going to like the wind farm or doing other activities too. So uh, that worked out pretty well. So they expanded this uh, Kukui Cup this past year. Um, but you actually get an award in the Kukui Cup, right? Yeah, you get like a, an I, iPad or something like that. Yeah. Uh, the winning. And the students compete. The students compete. So they had, I think, like 40% of the dorms, uh, the population of four dorms, they, they competed something on that order. So, so but, but uh, I guess what, I, what I'd like to uh, focus on is, um, say, for example, when Sean, Sean Wirt was talking about these devices mm -hmm. to turn off the power in your house, um, it needs more research. Uh, it's not on the market yet. Right. Uh, I mean, although Ocean, I think, is working on it. Um, the question is, this, is the program, the Renewable Energy Program, REIS, Renewable Energy and Island Sustainability Program, does it foment or create that research? Does it have an effect on people who might actually solve that problem and go to market? with a, some kind of device that would turn, for example, the energy off in your house? Well, again, there's many different facets of that. There's, there's some people that just take these short courses, just want to get awareness. And mm -hmm. then there's other people, graduate students doing PhD students, who dig really deep into their projects. So um, people are going to do different things. Some people may want to Part of our program is to educate the next generation of teachers too, whether they go into uh, K through 12 or they go into community colleges or they become professors at other universities. But other facets are some people will go into industry and some of these people that are going into industry have ideas from their thesis and so forth. Uh, as you mentioned, uh, demand response is a big thing and in terms of developing uh, optimization algorithms, control algorithms to control different appliances, tell them when to turn on, turn off. There's all sorts of complex mathematics associated with um, in, involving even stuff like game theory where you can decide, okay, this device should turn on, turn off, or even to incentivize consumer behavior into doing things that are more uh, energy conserving too. So. Uh, we anticipate some of our students will get into uh, um, companies, maybe even startup companies, uh, doing some uh, entrepreneurial type uh, uh, work in the energy sector. Well, suppose I come to you and say, uh, Dr. Ku, I'm, I'm a student at the College of Engineering right. or somewhere at the university, and I have this idea for a device like the ones we were talking about. Um, can you help me? And the question is, will you help me? And what can you do for me to advance my, my, my creative research uh, experience? Well, 
part of doing graduate work is um, doing some creative research. And this, um, this Reese group is really multidisciplinary, so there's a lot of different areas yeah. that students can go That's into. That's really important. So they can work for, on wave energy, they can work on biofuels, they can work on engineering, um, different engineering problems on devices, building uh, you know, nano devices for the, to make stronger wind turbines, or they can work on smart grid problems uh, to develop better control mechanisms to uh, do demand response. So you'll help me? Um, we'll try to help you. We'll figure out, well, what exactly are you looking at? And if there's a related project, we'll try to get you involved with this project, too. So You'll place me. You'll connect me. We'll try. You, that multidisciplinary thing. You'll connect me to other people who may be working on disciplines that might help in, in, in bringing this idea together. Yeah. I think that's one thing we like to do. We have, like I said, many faculty doing different things. And we don't have everything covered, but, you know, we have quite a few... Uh, different research areas that, and hopefully, you know, if someone, a graduate student, a potential graduate student came and talked to me, I could say, yeah, why don't you talk to Professor X and then maybe he can help you on, on your project. Now, would, you know, if you didn't have this program, wouldn't you do the same thing? What, is, what does this program make a difference to that conversation? Well, this is more of a formal education program. There have been, you know, there are many other very strong groups at the University of Hawaii. The Hawaii Natural Energy Institute has been doing great we'll work talk about for them, yeah. uh, many years. Uh, but our focus uh, is on both education and research. So to um, get students interested in this, and then also, you know, we mentioned the outreach part too. So, you know, and, and then also connecting with mainland schools and international uh, schools too to develop exchange programs. That's another thing that I, I'm trying to work on too is developing more exchanges with uh, schools in Japan and so forth so we can exchange research ideas too. So it's to excite ideas within the container of, of these goals, that is building renewable energy and island sustainability. Um, and so that you, you wouldn't have that at least to the same degree otherwise, with the container of this program, uh, then it's, it's got, there's a soft landing for anybody who wants to be involved because your goal is to advance it into the public and, and, and for that matter, the academic community, so everybody is working and thinking about it, yeah. Yeah, we want to work with the other groups, both on the UH campus and then system-wide too. There's many other groups uh, on other UH campuses too working on energy and sustainability issues but this is another group it has a focus right now the focus is more on graduate education but we will hopefully eventually develop an undergraduate program in this area I'm also working on other committees within UH Manoa to develop degree programs in sustainability too so to give students more options many more students these days are interested in energy and sustainability because they hear about this and they want to get involved in something that can have an impact you know what well, you say sustainability and I always I always ask what people mean when they say sustainability um, I mean for example I'm interested in um, in water I'm interested in trying to preserve fresh water for the state of Hawaii, and I think this is an issue about whether we can do that with the current infrastructure. Um, so is that part of sustainability? What is sustainability? Well, I think sustainability is a broader topic. I've been focusing more on energy, but with sustainability, as you mentioned, there's water, there's food, there's ecosystems and the environment, so it's a, a broader terminology that definitely has a, a very important impact on Hawaii. So uh, we go back to the ancient days with the Ahapuas and uh, we're not there. We rely on these huge mats and container ships that bring all our energy, our food, our, you know, our supplies and so forth. So if we can be a little bit more um, sustainable, maybe not rely so much on this, that would help out a lot. So. So what, what, are the, uh, what are the metrics of a program like this? In other words, uh, you know, so you talk to the granting agency, I suppose they want to know what you're doing. Uh, what do you say in terms of demonstrating to them that there's some, some actual, uh, you know, success on a given point or points? Um, what metrics do you provide to them? Well, I think the most important metrics are getting students into the workforce, educating students. Um, in getting grants, 
it's become very competitive uh, with the uh, National Science Foundation, with the Department of Energy, mm -hmm. with the Defense Agency. It's very competitive. So you have to have really a compelling argument, why should they fund your program? So you really need to have an innovative and unique program before they will fund you. So we have tried, you know, many sources for funding. Um, you know, we've been successful on, on some funding, but, you know, many s uh, types of funding, you know, we're still working at trying to get... Uh, yeah, well, that's the, I think that people have to understand that these, these funds do not last forever. It's a dollar amount right. spent over uh, whatever number of years uh, pursuant to a bunch of specifications and requirements. Um, and when it's out, when it's over, it's over, and you have to get new funding, right? <laughs> so you're always looking for the funding over the hill, right? Yeah, well, I think our job as a faculty is to try to go after this government funding. Um, as a director of this group, I, I'm also hoping to get, attract more private funding uh, for the Reese group, and then also get more institutional support, too. So. Um, we've had a change of administration. Uh, Tom Apples, our new chancellor, and so, you know, we're trying to work with him. And he's also mentioned sustainability is a very important uh, facet of UH Manoa. So yeah, it's uh, it's tough work uh, to try to get support from private industry and then also go after the federal funding and get institutional support too. But you know, we need all three legs. Mm -hmm. to be able to be a functional uh, sure. organization. Sure, so. you got a heavy job, actually. There's right. a, lot of, a lot of balls in the air. And why don't we take a short break and come back and talk about all your collaborations and relationships and how you're going to move them forward. We'll do that right after the break. This is Think Tech with Anthony Koo of the uh, College of uh, Engineering at UH Manoa. We'll be right back. 760 KGU. Part of the Wall Street Business Network. A couple of new accidents have been reported. There's one by the Federal Building on Alamona Boulevard at Punchbowl Street. Another one downtown at Alapai and King. If you're going west from town, the H1 slows at the airport on ramp on the viaduct. The Moana Lewis slows at Fort Chapter Flats. Really slow today uh, from those points to the stadium. The Windward Drive is normal on the Poly Like Like, the H3, and no problems to Hawaii Kai. So I asked you about uh, other players, Rochelle and Denise and Sharon and mm -hmm. the schools, and um, and then we can talk about the program on UH campus and and Waikiki. That'll suck up the rest of the show. Yeah, well, <laughs> I can talk about that the campus project for a few minutes. Well, whatever. However, the, the okay, discussion well, let's goes. Let's do this briefly. Okay, that's fine. Only because we said we would. And, uh, and then when we close, you know, we're in the last few minutes, I'll ask you, what are the, what are the things you're working on right okay. now? Okay, sounds know, and good. And this will be the, those things. And um, then I'll ask you, I guess the last question will be, um, where's this going? Mm -hmm. I mean, where do you see it going? How do you see it actually meeting its goals? Where is it going to go in the future? How? What kind of a contribution is it going to make to the larger Think Tech Radio is also brought to you by InmoBee. Since its inception in 2007, InmoBee has grown to become the world's largest independent mobile advertising network, serving over 100 billion mobile ads to date. It has built its product in parts of the world where the mobile phone is not just a screen, it's the only screen. After launching in the U.S. and Europe in 2010, InmoBee has more than doubled its global network, from 7 billion to 60 billion impressions monthly, and has offices on four continents, in Bangalore, Johannesburg, and London, in Nairobi, New York, and Paris, in San Francisco, Seoul, Singapore, and Tokyo. In Mobi. Now back to Think Tech Wednesday on AM 760 KGU. Here once again is your host, Jay Fidel. Thank you, Jack Waters. We're back. We're live. We're talking with Anthony Koo of the Department of the College of Engineering at UH Manoa, and we're talking about his project, the REIS, Renewable Energy and Island Sustainability Project, uh, which he is working very hard on, even during his sabbatical. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, you, you spoke, um, well, before I do that, I just want to say that Hawaii Energy is our sponsor. 
the Hawaiian Electric Company is our sponsor, and DBED with Richard Lim and Mark Glick, uh, they're working on energy. And so we, uh, we are very appreciative for the help and the support of our sponsors. Uh, so Anthony, you know, you, you spoke of collaborations with other people at university and in the community. Who are you collaborating with in this project? Well, we're fortunate to have uh, many people that help, help to support us. Um, and in the social science, I, I'm very appreciative of the support of uh, Denise Conan. Um, she has a number of efforts going with her greenhouse uh, gas emissions and so forth. Um, also with Philip Johnson, he's been very supportive. There's also, you know, I have to acknowledge uh, Peter Crouch. Uh, mm -hmm. he, he actually pushed to get this thing going, and so he's been very supportive. HNEI. Um, you know, I have frequent talks with Rick Rochelot, and uh, you know we've worked together on, on different things. We've tried to get some uh, additional resources in terms of faculty hired in, in uh, the energy area, and we're still working on this uh, with the new chancellor too. So, um, also mentioned, uh, we've been working with uh, Hawaiian Electric Company too. So there's some of the engineers at Hawaiian Electric at different levels that we've talked to and. Um, they're actually on the department. One of the engineers is actually on the Department of Energy grant, uh, Dora Nakafuji. So mm -hmm, she's mm -hmm. been working closely on, especially the short courses too. So she's helped out with the short courses. Well, you know, it, it, it strikes me that uh, this is transformational for the community. I'm sure that's one of the factors that brought you into it in the first place. That, that Hawaii is going to change in a dramatic way uh, as this as this initiative uh, plays out. Um, and in order to do that, you have to have collaborations all around the community. So it's a good thing. Collaboration is always a good thing when you're in a transformation because everybody has to buy in. Everybody has to be, everybody has to put his shoulder behind the wheel. So the more collaborations both in and out of the campus, uh, you know, the better. Well, I th think that's one thing we want to do. We want to also build uh, uh, on our collaborations that we have. We would like to have uh, more collaborations with Hawaiian Electric. I've also talked with other people in, in the community too, including like Mark Duda, mm -hmm. uh, Maurice Kaya, mm -hmm. and they've all been very helpful in terms of offering their advice and help in, in terms of how to get this thing going and so forth. You know, but, but Anthony, uh, one, th one thing of interest is that <clears throat> in a transformational situation uh, where there is no czar, per mm -hmm. se, you know, no, nobody carrying the flag up at the front, um, and we have so many organizations and officials and companies and trade associations and activist groups and whatnot, all playing into this process, this porridge of, of people and organizations. Sometimes it gets a little lost and confused. Where is the university? Where does it fit in the porridge? What role do you see that it has uh, to, move, to move things ahead? Well, we need... I never promised you a rose garden here. I know that's a hard question. Yeah. Well, we need people trained in these areas, energy and sustainability. You know, right now, Hawaiian Electric has to hire people from the mainland. They have to hire consultants and mm, so forth. Mm, mm. So if we can have more of the workforce trained locally, that will definitely help the state. So that's one thing. Just like the HCEI, wants more local energy sources. We want more locally trained students here that can enter the workforce and be productive engineers or uh, whatever field or they want. Or entrepreneurs. For entrepreneurs, that. whatever field they want to go into. So um, that's one thing. Reaching out to the community, finding out their needs, and then you know tailoring our program so that we can meet those needs, working with the community colleges, K through 12 schools, to get other kids into the pipeline so then we can, as an output, produce a educated workforce. And then also we want to be an internationally recognized uh, a center in the energy and sustainability area so we can have, get the latest uh, research results and so forth. So we're trying to work with both mainland schools. Some of the schools that we've talked to are uh, Carnegie Mellon. Uh, I also have some collaborators at University of Maryland, Georgia Tech. So these are some of the schools I work with. And then also as a gateway to Asia too. So It's pretty ambitious. 
yeah, I spent a lot of time on my sabbatical in Asia. I spent just, I just came back from Japan for, for three weeks and I was working with some collaborators at some uh, Japanese institutions too. So, um, so is it that you see Hawaii as a, I mean, I, I guess a lot of people see Hawaii as a laboratory, uh, an energy laboratory where we have special resource, uh, resources and at the same time we have special needs you know, this place more than other places can can benefit by, mm -hmm. and ultimately export intellectual property re relating to energy. And, but somebody has to bring it together and make that happen. Uh, and maybe the university is really right on with this, spot on with developing a workforce of knowledgeable people, because you need the workforce to actually do that. <laughs> well. What you mentioned in terms of why being a laboratory it is a laboratory. That's how come many companies, uh, Department of Energy, NREL are very interested. They have people coming here to, to work with some of the people in the state. So at the University of Hawaii at Manoa campus, uh, we like to turn our electrical grid, the microgrid, into a laboratory where we can develop a smart grid and then understand the different facets so the first thing we're trying to do is understand the data. You know, you get environmental data about weather conditions, you monitor the electrical grid, so you get all this data. What do you do with the data? Then you try to form models with this data. After you form the models, then you develop uh, these uh, demand response algorithms to control energy usage and so forth, both on uh, the generation side and on the load side. And then you try to understand, well, what are the impacts of doing these things? How can you make the, uh, and in this case, the consumers are the students, the staff, and the faculty aware of these things, and, and what sort of policies will emanate from this, too? So this is a project that we just started, and the University of Hawaii is, um, will have uh, lots of renewable resources. We're planning on deploying you know, up to several megawatts of distributed solar on campus too. So this will be a very interesting uh, lab to see what's, what will happen as we develop more um, uh, smart grid resources and so forth. Well, I think it's a fabulous idea to use the university campus as a laboratory, especially on this, you know, on the smart grid, because that's, you know, to me, that is uh, low-hanging fruit in terms yeah. of our own statewide laboratory mm -hmm. to try to deliver export uh, intellectual property elsewhere to Asia to the mainland and so forth well I think you know the most important thing is getting these students really excited so I don't really have to advertise mm -hmm. about okay we have this program students are coming to me and say I want to work on this project because they say yeah I want to actually design these devices to these sensor networks work with these what are called Arduino units, connect them up with these Zigbee communications, and they get excited just about doing these things. So we have, we're just starting to get these projects on, uh, going right now, and I have a lab in, uh, in the engineering complex, uh, and students are really getting signed just to do these different projects. This is just one of actually several projects that are going on. Unfortunately, I don't have time to talk about all the projects, but you know, I think the most important thing is you know, getting these students really interested and motivated to working on these uh, interesting problems. Well, I'm getting interested and motivated right here, right now, Anthony. So uh, how do I go to school in the College of Engineering? How do I get in? What do I do? Can I get involved in your program? What must I do now? Well, it depends on what level you want to uh, oh, enter the level. program. I want to work on the, on the campus grid. That's what I want to work on. Okay. Well, you know, what's very interesting, uh, I see students of all ages coming back <laughs> to school. I just talked to a student uh, today, and I was saying, well, what is he interested in uh, undergraduate programs and working on projects with me? And then I find out, oh, he's already a lawyer. And then he's interested in coming back as an engineer That's and maybe wonderful. working on projects. I can projects. really relate to that. You know, so, he always wanted to do it. Now he's realizing his dreams. <laughs> so I see, you know, when I went to college, you know, most of the kids were 18 to 22, you know. But now you see more and more older students, uh, maybe more mature students, uh, they've already done different things in their life. They were farmers or they did other things or they were lawyers or did other things. And they're coming back to school because they're interested in doing something maybe a little bit different. Yeah, getting up at the 21st century. Anthony Q. Koo.
Professor of Electrical Engineering at UH College of uh, Engineering, Director of the Energy and Sustainability Program, REIS. And we have been talking about developing a new energy workforce at UH Manoa. Thank you so much, Anthony. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be it's on this program. It's been a great program. discussion. This is Think Tech. Uh, tomorrow we'll have Asia in review, and on Friday we'll have Think Tech Friday. Uh, we are playing now on OC16, our show about the wetware program in Kaka'ako. And next week we'll be playing our show on OC16 about fiscal management, uh, rather fiscal policy in the 2013 legislative session, which is a luncheon program we conducted last week and which will be on our show next week. Uh, where uh, seven, a panel of seven legislators and other people associated with uh, fiscal policy uh, presented their views. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you, Anthony, for being here. Thank you. Aloha. Aloha.